Hey guys, it's Ivana and welcome to the Intellecta. Today we are going to do the another form of indeterminate forms and it will be one raised to the infinity power. So how do we get this form? Let's see our definition. Our definition says limit of a sequence a sub n equals 1 plus 1 over n raised to the power of n is the number denoted by e. That means limit when n approaches infinity of 1 plus 1 over n raised to the power of n equals e and this e is the base of the natural logarithm ln of x. Today we are going to apply this definition in three examples, so stay tuned and let's get started! Surprise me again! So guys, I decided to try something a little bit different from that I usually do in my videos and I hope you're gonna like it. Please write in the comment section down below, do you like it or not, do you have any suggestion and so on. So I'm not gonna talk a lot, let's get straight into it and let's start with our examples. Today we are gonna do these three examples. Uh, the first one is not that hard, it's a simple one. I just want to show you how to apply our definition. The second one is a little bit harder, but not, not that hard. Um, and the third one is the hardest one, but not that hard as well. We just have to change this in the parentheses and then apply our definition. So let's start with the first example. So our first example is limit when n approaches infinity 1 plus 1 over n raised to the power of 3n. Here we have our definition. Uh, what is the first step? The first step is to plug in infinity and we want to prove if this here expression is our indeterminate form 1 raised to the, inf uh, infin raised to the infinity power. So, let's plug in infinity. We have 1 plus 1 over n. If n is infinity, we have 1 over infinity, 1 over an extremely large number. That means this here fraction is approaching 0. And we have 1 plus, this here we don't need, so 1, uh, 1 raised to the 3 times infinity, 3 times infinity is also infinity, that means we have our indeterminate form 1 raised to the infinity power, that means we can use this definition over here. Okay, now the second step is to compare our definition with our example. So what do we have here? We have 1 plus 1 over n. The same thing is here, 1 plus 1 over n. We don't have to change it, so let's leave it just as it is. And here we have 3n. As you can notice, uh, according to our definition, if you have n here as a power, uh, n here in the denominator, you have to have n as a power. So let's apply this here. We have n as uh, in the denominator, we have to have n here as a power. But we have 3n, so that means we have to rewrite this here in order to get this n as a power. So we can write like this, limit when n approaches infinity, 1 plus 1 over n raised to the power of n and raised to the third power. Is this true? May I write like this? Is it allowed to write like this? Yes, because I use this property a raised to the power of m and this all together raised to the power of n equals a m times n. So that means 3 times n is the same as this 3n here. So it's correct. And if you take a look, you may notice we have a limit when n approaches infinity, 1 plus 1 over n raised to the power of n. It's our definition over here. So this is our definition and that means we can, instead of this here, write just e. So our result is e raised to the third power. At the end, we have limit when n approaches infinity of 1 plus 1 over n raised to the 
uh, power of 3n equals e raised to the power of 3. So this is our result. Okay, if you have any questions, please write in a comment section down below. I will answer it. And let's start with the second example. So this is our second example. We have limit when n approaches infinity of 2n plus 3 over 2n raised to the power of 3n plus 2. So, if you take a look here in the parentheses, we can write this a little bit nicer. So, let's write this as limit when n approaches infinity of 2n over 2n is just 1 plus what's left? 3 over 2n. 3 over 2n. Raised to the power of 3n plus 2. Okay. So let's plug in infinity uh, to know if we have 1 raised to the infinity power. So 1 plus 3 over 2 times infinity is also infinity, an extremely large number. That means this fraction approaches, in, uh, in, approaches 0. Here 3 times infinity, that is 3 times infinity is also infinity, plus 2, this 2 is negligibly small, so we don't have to consider it at all. So we have 1 raised to the infinity power. That means it's true. We have indeterminate form 1 raised to the infinity power and it allows us to use this definition over there. Okay, what is our first, what is our next step? So our next step is to, to compare our definition over there and our example, our task. What should we do? In the first place we have 1. Here we have one as well, it's true, it's okay, so just we have just to leave this as it is. And here we have 3 over 2 times n. So here we have 1 over n, that means in the numerator we have to have 1 and 1 over something here in the denominator. So let's write like this, then we have limit when n approaches infinity of 1 plus we want to have 1 in the numerator, so what should we do? We should send this number 3 in the denominator. And we can write like this, 2n over 3. Is this okay? Is this true? Yes. So, if we have 1 over 2n over 3, is the same as 1 over 1 over 2n over 3. This is double decker fraction, that means we, it's allowed to, we should multiply n's and what is inside. 1 times 3 is 3, 1 times 2n is 2n. So, we prove that 3 over 2n is the same as 1 over 2n over 3. Okay, um, what's next? We, we can see that if we have n in the denominator, we have to have n as a power. We have 2n or 3 in the denominator, that means we have to have 2n over 3 as a power. But it's not allowed to change overall value, that's why we should write over 2n over 3. If you have 2n over 3 over 2n over 3, that means it's 1. We didn't change anything, it's, everything is the same. And we shouldn't forget this here, 3n plus 2. So if you put hand here, you may notice this here is the same as this here. So it's true. And now you may notice it, we have 2n over 3 in the denominator and 2n over 3 as a power. That means this here this here is our, according to our definition, e. And now we have e limit when n approaches infinity of what's left 3n plus 2 over 2n over 3. 3n plus 2 over 2n over 3. Okay, why did I write limit? In my last two videos I explained we have to write limit as long as we have n. In the moment when we when this n disappears, we don't have to write n uh, l i m anymore. So that means we have n. We have to write this limit l i m. Okay. Now let's simplify this here. We have 
E limit when n approaches infinity of 3 times 3n is 9n plus 6 over 2n times 1 is just 2n. Okay, what have we now? We have limit when n approaches infinity, so we have limit at infinity of a rational expression. That means we should find the highest power that appears in the denominator and then divide every term by it. So let's do what is the highest power that appears in the denominator is n. And now we have e limit when n approaches infinity of 9n divided by n is just 9 plus 6 divided by n is 6 over n over 2n divided by n is just 2. Okay, and now we have to plug in infinity. If we plug in infinity, we have 9 plus 6 over infinity is approaching 0. I think it's clear till now. And now we have e. We don't have n anymore. This here is 0. So we have to write just through uh, 9 half. So e raised to the power of 9 over 2. And this is our result. So limit when n approaches infinity of 2n plus 3 over 2n raised to the power of 3n plus 2 is e raised to the power of 9 half. Okay. If you have some questions, you can write in the comment section down below once again. So let's start with the third example. So our third example is limit when n approaches infinity of n squared minus 1 over n squared plus 1 raised to the power of n squared. Okay, so let's write this in the parentheses a little bit nicer. Let's simplify this. If you take a look at our definition once again, you can see that in the first place is just 1. And of course we need 1 in the first place also here. If you in the denominator have n squared plus 1 and you want to have 1, you have to have also in the denominator n squared plus 1. That's why we will write in the denominator n squared plus 1. We have already n squared. We need just plus 1. But if we add plus, if we add plus 1, we have to add also minus 1 while it's uh, because it's not uh, allowed to change overall value plus one minus one is zero so we didn't change anything and it's true and we shouldn't forget this minus one over there over n squared plus one raised to the power of n squared okay now you may notice we have n squared plus one over n squared plus one it is just one limit when n approaches infinity of n squared over n squared 1 and what, what's left? We have minus 1, minus 1 is minus 2 over n squared plus 1 raised to the power of n squared. Okay, the same as in the previous example, we have to have 1 in the numerator and what should we do now? We have to send this minus 2 in the denominator. So we can, we should do this. We have 1. If we send minus 2 in the denominator, then here is plus 1 over what? n squared plus 1 over minus 2. Is this correct? This is once again the double decker fraction. We have to multiply n's and what is inside and we will get this these two is the same and if we have n squared plus 1 over minus 2 uh, in the denominator we have to have the same as a power so let's write this n squared plus 1 over minus 2 and we don't it's not allowed to change overall value that's why we have to write n squared plus 1 over minus 2 and now we have here 1 when you divide this. And don't forget this n squared, it's important. Okay. Now, what do we have? We have 
this here in the denominator and the same here as a power. That means this here is according to our definition E. And now we have E raised to the n squared over n squared plus 1 over minus 2. So E, but don't forget limit, when n approaches infinity of n squared minus uh, times minus 2 is minus 2 n squared over n squared plus 1. And once again we have a limit at infinity of irrational expression. That means we have to find the highest power that appears in the denominator and then divide every term by it. What is the highest power? It's n squared divided by n squared. And now we have e minus 2n squared over n squared is just, okay, don't forget, lim. And now minus 2 over n squared divided by n squared is just 1 plus 1 over n squared when n approaches infinity. And now if we plug in, if we plug in infinity, that means this here is approaching 0. We don't have n anymore, that means uh, we don't have to write lim anymore. And then we have minus 2 over 1 is just minus 2 and this is 1 over a e squared. Why is this true? Yeah, because I use this property a raised to the power of minus n equals 1 over a raised to the power of n. So this here is our result. Limit when n approaches infinity of r squared minus 1 over n squared plus 1 raised to the power of n squared equals e raised to the power of 1 half. I hope this is clear and once again if you have some questions, if, uh, if you have something that's not clear, please write in a comment section down below. Okay, so guys, if you find this video helpful, please leave a like, leave a comment down below, share with your friends, follow me on Instagram and as always stay healthy, stay positive and do some math.